So we're bringing a new family guardian into our home in just a few months. Now my last family guard dog breed was a Connie Corso. I love Connie Corsos. I work with hundreds of Connie Corsos and think they make incredible family guardians. One of the best in the world in fact. So with all of that said, as a canine behaviourist who specialises in mostly family guardian breeds, why am I choosing an English Mastiff this time round? Well in today's video that's exactly what I'm going to break down and hopefully it will help inform you guys what you should be thinking about to help find your perfect breed. So let's dive into it. Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. If you're new here, I'm Will. I'm a behaviorist and I'm the founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to helping you choose the perfect breed for you to become high level canine leaders through our range of online resources, as well as us providing the world's leading tools and equipment that help you in raising perfect canine companions. So if this is your first time here, start your incredible journey by subscribing and turning on that little notification bell so you never miss a future upload. So with all that said, let's dive into why I'm choosing the English Mastiff over a Connie Corso for my next family guard dog breed. This was a decision that I have taken extremely seriously and I'm proud that I do practice what I preach in terms of the effort that should go into making ideal breed selections. I'll be completely honest with you and my heart and my bias was leaning towards a Connie Corso. However, I broke down kind of the five most important things to me in making this decision, and I looked at it as objectively as possible to decide what breed would be perfect for me and my life, as it has drastically changed in the last six months with the growth of the channel and our online businesses, and all of that had to be taken into account. So the five areas that are most important to me were first and foremost being excellent with children, then their natural guarding skills, then their energy levels, their ability to be left on their own, and lastly, their trainability. Now, before I break down each of those categories between the English Mastiff and the Connie Corso, it's worth note mentioning that that's my personal list of priorities, and it's completely subjective. Yours could and should be different, especially in terms of your canine leadership and experience to manage certain breeds. Now, not to be big-headed or anything, but as what I do for a career means I can comfortably manage most dog breeds so that isn't really a priority for me but for people who don't work in the industry and don't have the experience that I do then that should definitely be a huge priority so with that little kind of important disclaimer out the way let's dive into each uh, breed skill set with children so both the Connie Corso uh, and the English Mastiff are known for being excellent with their families and their children. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that my Connie Corso puppy Mabel passed away from a heart condition earlier this year. But even at just four months old, you could see how deep her love for my children was. So you won't go wrong with a Connie Corso in for the form of them being excellent with your children. However, not only do I think the English Mastiff is slightly better with children than Corsos are, they are also slightly less wary of strangers. And for me, I predict a time when my sons will have their friends over to our house. And although I could ensure that my Connie Corso is under control at all times, they are a little bit more likely to misread rough play between kids. And they are also a bit quicker to act if they think that those kids need to be physically protected. An English Mastiff kind of gives you an extra layer of security on that front as they would often use that thunderous bark before becoming physical now obviously that's not set in stone and it's informed by my experience of working with dog to human aggression cases with both of these breeds and my experience informs my thought process that the english mastiff is kind of just about the better of the two in this field now, if you have kids and are considering getting a Connie Corso, don't panic with what I've just said. They are still amazing with children, but ensure your obedience is on point. And if you're not 100% confident, then keep them in another room if your children and their friends are playing. It's always worth being safe than sorry, especially when we're talking about these extremely powerful dogs. So let's look at their natural guarding skills. Now, obviously, all Mastiff breeds are renowned for their incredibly 
fearless natures and dedication to the task of protecting their families. All the Mastiff breeds would they lay down their lives for their families and all are very capable from a physical point of view. So to choose between them is a little bit irrelevant really. However, if I had to choose, I do think that the Connie Corso is the best family protection dog if the worst case scenario was to ever unfortunately happen. But not so much better that it would be enough to sway my decision towards them. So although the Connie Corso would technically take the win in this category, I would feel 100% reassured, leaving my family knowing an English Mastiff was there to look after them in that worst case scenario. Now, energy levels was an interesting section for me. I'm very open to discussing my mental health difficulties. And through my battle with my depression, I found that the best treatment for me is exercise in the great outdoors, mountain biking being my favorite, closely followed by hiking. Now, when I chose a Connie Corso last year, my thought process was that I wanted a family guardian that was athletic enough to join me and my working Labrador Sully on decent hikes and mountain bike rides. As getting in the great outdoors is awesome, but doing it with your perfect canine companion makes it even better. However, during kind of my short time with Mabel, my Connie Corso, I noticed that when I was exercising her and training her a lot and helping her become a trail dog and hiking companion, that I was leaving my wife and children at home alone. And the whole purpose of me getting a family guard dog is for the peace of mind that when I'm not with them. So on top of that, uh, I already have the perfect trail dog and hiking companion in my Labrador Sully. So this time around, I decided I wanted to go to the other end of the spectrum in terms of energy levels. The lower the energy, the better. Now, obviously, I'll still provide the uh, level of exercise with good two walks a day with me and Sully and my family. But on the days like today, for example, when I was out for two hours at 6 a.m. this morning over on Canic Chase Mountain Biking, that the family guard dog can stay at home and do its job of guarding my family and they don't need to be jealous that it's missing out on a two-hour run as for an English Mastiff that would probably be its worst nightmare and would much rather be asleep at home in front of the fire just keeping half an ear out for if someone's there who shouldn't be so in this category the English Mastiff was just clearly a better fit for me. Now, the next priority for me was their ability to be on their own. Now, this is kind of joined with energy levels, and a lot of the themes are shared. Again, when we go back to last year when I chose a Connie Corso, my life looked so much different to what it does now. At that time, I was working from home all day, every day mostly, and a dog that I could have, and the Connie Corso at the time, could nearly come anywhere with me if I left the home. Now, the Connie Corso is known from suffering from separation anxiety and doesn't do well being left on its own for long periods of time. But since Mabel passed away, a lot has changed for me. It's a whirlwind ride and incredibly exciting, but it will mean I'll be travelling away a lot more when this lockdown ends. I start my master's degree in September, which requires me to be away for six weekends in the next year and two evenings a week then when the travel bans are lifted I'll be hopping on a plane to visit my good friends Jason and Cara to make some videos with them and their glorious Connie Corso Bruce Wayne I'll be meeting up with my favorite Connie Corso breeders over at 12 Titans Kennels I'm also working on a really exciting project with my friends over at Westside Barbell, which again will require more travel to the States. I've got a lot of breeders and breed experts around the world lined up to make some really awesome videos that I'm very excited about for this channel to take the quality of the videos and the value for you guys up a level. Our online business is also doing well as we're creating the world's best canine products and kind of the word of mouth is starting to spread from our initial customers. We have new lines coming soon from harnesses, training leads, mental stimulation toys and puzzles that I've designed alongside training aids and some cool outdoor clothing for the humans. So long story short, my schedule has become very intense. We do have access to doggy daycare, family members that are at home all the time, which is a huge help. And the new dog can come with us here to the offices and to our studio. And a prerequisite for any future employees will be a love of dogs and to be happy with with a big slobbery mastiff chilling at work with us but it must be a breed that is content being on its own as I will be traveling here there and everywhere and there'll be a lot of change in the dog's lifestyle and for that an English mastiff is a far better fit than a Connie Corso. 
And last but not least, trainability is a huge consideration for me, but not in the way that you might be thinking. Now, there's a reason that nearly all professional dog trainers or canine behaviorists, especially those of us on YouTube, it's a reason that we have highly trainable dog breeds like Malinois or German Shepherds or Border Collies. I'm completely guilty of this myself with my Labrador. I use him as a role model dog and an example dog when I'm working with clients or making videos. We all do this as they're just so much easier to train and it makes our jobs much easier. However, I really want to practice what I preach and show that all dog breeds are capable of being perfect canine companions, that they can all have excellent basic obedience that keeps them under control at all times. This means they have to have a great sit and stay. They'll walk really nicely to heel and have a perfect recall alongside impeccable manners so they're a pleasure to be with no matter where you go. So for me, I love the challenge of having a low energy dog breed that's known to be stubborn or hard to train and English Mastiffs are right up there with that and I'm really excited to demonstrate exactly what is possible when you follow my methodology of being a calm consistent leader. I'll be following my perfect puppy course myself and documenting the experience here on YouTube and even with a breed that has the reputation of a breed like an English Mastiff. Now that's obviously super specific to me as I have this channel and my other training channel so that's part of my business but if you were looking for a more trainable dog breed between the two then obviously the Connie Corso would win this category hands down all day every day so for me based on if you kind of did it round versus round on those sections the English Mastiff took three rounds and the Connie Corso took two but looking at the bigger picture it was clear to me when I was being objective that the English Mastiff was the perfect fit even if my bias was was leaning towards getting another Corso. Now, there was definitely other breeds that we were considering at length. So I'm going to do another video like this for those breeds, comparing them, as I do believe that if you guys can understand how I made my choice, then it might be able to help you in making your own choice, as choosing the pervert breed is the first and one of the most important steps to having a dream companion that's perfect for you. Now, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and drop it a like. Come check out our website or you can come say hello over on Instagram. All the links are in the description box below. And I will see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Canine Show.